Simon found himself in what seemed to be the wrong place at the wrong time. But all time is God's time. All time belongs to God. And God is in charge and God is in control. And so all time is perfect time. When we live in God's time, Cairo's time, we feel that even something like being in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic in what seems to be the wrong place at the wrong time is the right time. We are right where we are supposed to be, just as Simon was. Now, I always try to uh, place myself in the shoes of a biblical character that I am encountering in the Bible. And so Simon found himself in Jerusalem after walking for six weeks because he was from Cyrene. There was no Uber back then. So he had to walk through some rough terrain. In fact, the Bible says hill country. He went through a lot to be there. So he's all thrilled to be in Jerusalem for the Passover, which was the dream for every Jew, every devout Jew. And then as thrilled and as excited as he is, Boom! Here he gets this interruption. He finds himself in the midst of a crowd and they're shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And not just he, and not just shouting, crucify him. He's all there confused. What is going on? And all of a sudden, Simon finds himself with the soldiers handing him a cross and saying, here, carry it. He didn't want to carry that cross. He must have protested as many of us are protesting right now, saying, I don't deserve this. We are protesting this coronavirus cross that has been handed to us. We are protesting as Simon did, but Simon carried the cross. And as we may find ourselves saying right now, I don't deserve this devastation to my family, my bank account, my sense of security. I don't deserve this cross. Think about it. You didn't deserve any of the crosses that have been handed to you in this life. You didn't deserve the divorce. You didn't deserve the abuse. You didn't deserve the betrayal. You don't deserve the depression. You don't deserve the anxiety. You don't deserve any of your crosses. No crosses are deserved, but all crosses are perfect because they are given to us by God. And just as God would not have allowed his son, Jesus Christ, to go through an experience that wasn't good for him, he would not allow us to go through any cross. And he wouldn't allow us to go through this coronavirus cross if it wasn't good for us. It's good for us. We just don't see it. That's why we need the eyes of faith. For we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. And Simon didn't see at the time that the cross was good for him. But it was. And you don't see right now that this is good for you. But it is. Think about it. Wasn't it? All those crosses in your life that turns you into the person that you are today. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for going through the experience of being an immigrant. The experience of living under communism. The experience of living in poverty. The experience, the devastating, the hard experience. The the unbelievable experience of going through my parents' divorce. That... I wouldn't be the priest I am today if it wasn't for that. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for the bullying I sustained in school. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for weighing 325 pounds at one time in my life. I wouldn't be able to understand you as I do and have the heart that I do for you. See, God was developing me into who I am today and God is still developing me into who I am today through the crosses that I sustained. This is only a tool. It is not our destination. It's only a tool. This cross is a tool for God to mold us to shape us, to develop us into who we are. I was reflecting on this this past Thursday, April 2nd. You know, it was the Chrism Mass in the cathedral. And I was supposed to be there. And especially since this is my 10th anniversary, I was looking forward to renewing my vows with all the priests and the bishop. And especially the bishop who only every five years mentions the names of priests. I was looking forward to him mentioning my name. And what happened? I found myself alone in front of my television. 
all down and sad and depressed because I couldn't celebrate Mass with my people. You know, I can't visit people. I can't hear confessions. I can't anoint people. I can't comfort people one-on-one. -on -one. I can't hold people's hands one-on-one. -on -one. I can't do any of the things that I have been doing for the past 10 years. And so I was down and depressed. And I was like, why? Why is this happening? Why? Why? I don't want this. And I was down. And then I remembered... I remembered what happened when during my seminary days I was feeling like I couldn't I couldn't go on anymore like I had to something had to happen and I went to the rector and I told him you know and I said I I, I need help you know and and I, and I went to him and I said I, I'm blaming myself for my parents divorce because that's what I that's what I was feeling I felt like I was guilty that they divorced and it was devastating me inside. It's one of the reasons why I got to be 325 pounds and I was feeling a lot of resentment in me and hate and all these feelings and, and I couldn't forgive. In many ways, a lot, of, a lot of that was eating away at me and I said, I can't be a priest. I can't be a priest like this. I... How can I be a priest and preach forgiveness when I feel all this stuff in me? I, I'm so broken. I need help. And I was expecting the rector of the seminary. I was expecting him to say to me, out, get out. It's over. That's why I was so devastated because the one dream in my life of being a priest was slipping away. And I go and I tell him this. And instead of throwing me out, of the seminary director looks at me and he says, Adam, I'm not going to lie to you. It's bad. You need help. But right now you came and you emptied your sack to me. You gave it all to me. And he said, thank you. Now we will carry it all together, he said. Together. And we carried it together. And I was ordained a priest. And I have been carrying it together, not with my rector, but with Jesus, whom the rector represented for the past 10 years. And I will continue to carry it together with Jesus for 50, 60, however many more years. I will make it as I made it. I made it to ordination and I will make it. That's what I was reminded this past Thursday. And I'm reminding all of you today. I did it because right there in the rector's office, I discovered that in the saddest time of my life, when I was ready to abandon that which I wanted more than anything else in my life, it was then that I discovered that I wasn't walking alone. Jesus found me. And I recognize them walking with me in the person of the rector. And so let this be the moment right now as I'm coming to you today on this Palm Sunday through my words, through my virtual hug right now to let you know that you are not alone. You are not alone, that we will make it. Yes, you are not alone. God is with you. We are never walking alone. Jesus is walking with you. It was then that it also hit me that it was in the cross, that it was during my parents' horrible divorce as I went to weighing 325 pounds through the anxiety and the depression and all those feelings of guilt that I was feeling, that I discovered that it was then during the divorce, during the cross, that I decided to give my life to Christ, that my vocation during the cross was cemented. It was the right place at the right time that I found myself in because it was God's time. God used that experience to make me who I am today. So carry the cross. Every cross has a reason. I got close to Jesus during my cross. And as Simon was in the right place at the right time, I was at the right place at the right time during my parents' divorce. I was at the right place when I lived under communism, when I moved here as an immigrant. I was at the right place during all those bullying experiences, all those abusive experiences. We are always at the right 
time because it's God's time. God's time. Simon was angry, as many of us may find ourselves to be angry. I was angry this past Thursday as well. But then Simon, as he's carrying the cross, and I invite you to do the same thing, Simon looks up and he looks up and he sees as he's handed the cross that he's not carrying it alone. As frightened as he was, as disappointed as he was, as confused as he was, he sees Jesus. Jesus too is carrying the cross. Simon, you are not alone. You are not alone. You, you are not alone. You are never, ever alone. Jesus is always with you because he loves you. Amen.